Welcome to Casual Clicksins, round two of the gauntlet. Round two, game two, actually. Uh, we've got, of course, the Fantastic Four trying to make it through their gauntlet, trying to see which team of the Fantastic Four um, can make it through. And today, we have Dr. Fantastic featuring um, Wolverine, the super rare from the set. The Thing, rare from the set. I kind of want to make it up for The Thing because last match he played in, I did misplay Alicia Grimm, the bystander that he generates at the beginning of the game. So he never really got to benefit off of having that plus one speed attack and damage if Alicia is within four squares of an opposing character. Um, so I'm going to hopefully get some redemption for him, see how much damage he can potentially deal. Combined with Wolverine, who, of course, as you know, with a Fantastic Four uh, trait, a new kind of fantastic teamwork, if he makes, if he hits with a close attack until your next turn, other friendly characters with a Fantastic Feet, with the Fantastic Four keyword can use a Flurry. Uh, I, I can imagine giving this thing Flurry would be uh, kind of, kind of damaging. That's what I'm hoping for. And uh, Human Torch, the 40.1, I'm using him for his stop click. Uh, if you recall some of the previous uh, installments of the gauntlet. I did say that I want to mess around with the stop clicks and I chose Human Torch just to add a little a bit more range since the Thing and Wolverine are of course melee characters. Uh, Dr. Fantastic has a 7 range and this Human Torch has a 6 range. Like I said, it's just to add some more range to the team. We'll see how this team works out going up against the Sinister Syndicate. Uh, yes, the Sinister Syndicate uh, this team is a very fringe team. Uh, I'm playing them because I like playing with the Sinister Syndicate team ability, uh, which incidentally they all have. So they're able to share that attack value. Uh, when this character makes an attack, you may replace its attack value with the printed attack value of an adjacent friendly character that can use this team ability. And I'm banking on their 11 attack values from Hobgoblin, Mysterio, and Green Goblin, along with some Perplex. Uh, to get the job done, just try to pile on enough damage uh, to hopefully hopefully take the other team out. Now, this team is a little susceptible to stealth teams, uh, which may be a problem with Dr. Fantastic Stealth. Um, but I'm hoping that maybe Prowler, being somewhat melee-oriented, has exploit weakness, um, can kind of help him get through that. And Hobgoblin as well has a trait that is uh, yet another Sinister Six that adjacent friendly characters with the Sinister Syndicate keyword can use Blades, Claws, Fangs. So that adds a little more da uh, potential damage to their close combat, making everyone potentially uh, to, into a melee character. So Hobgoblin, we'll see. He's got his work cut out for him against the Fantastic Four. They all do, really. Uh, so we'll see how they do. Um, we got the match ready to go. So here we go. And here we got the Sinister Five, ready to go, round two, match two. Mysterio's hidden back here, as you can see, being stealthy as always. Okay, so some of the strategy here with this team is a Jack-O-Lantern here will actually play a, I don't want to say critical role, but maybe it is, because he generates smoke cloud as free but only to generate three markers when an opposing character occupying one of jack-o-lantern smoke markers makes an attack characters they would target can use shape change uh, so not only does he make free smoke cloud but he can also potentially grant a uh, free shape change roll now the strategy with him is that prowler here and Mysterio both have stealth, so they can benefit off of that free smoke cloud that Jack-O-Lantern creates. Not only that, Prowler has free. If Prowler occupies hindering terrain, place him in hindering terrain within four squares and line of fire. So that just gives them extra mobility if Jack-O-Lantern uh, is able to place that smoke cloud in a favorable position. It of course keeps him hidden uh, Mysterio as well. Um, and Mysterio, remember that also has a trait, yet another Sinister Syndicate 
I'm sorry, yet another Sinister Six. Adjacent friendly characters with the Sinister Syndicate keyword can use Shape Change. So they've got they've got a lot of tricks here in their bags. Um, everyone is equipped with pumpkin bombs except uh, Mysterio and Green Goblin. Um, pumpkin bombs being effect energy explosion with minimum range of four knockback but only during range attacks this character can be given range destroy actions regardless of their damage value uh, so this is good for destroying walls which there are plenty of here and they all come with it free as long you know as long as you have the character <laughs> now i don't have three pumpkin bombs but that's fine i have the one to remind me that these three have it uh, and the illusion generator being equipped by Mysterio, of course, also gets it for free. That gives him shape change. And when this character uses it and succeeds after resolutions, generate an illusion bystander, which an illusion bystander is right here. Uh, 10 incapacitate with autonomous. No damage. This is really just a tie up piece to incapacitate and uh, hopefully get in the way of things. Uh, but still, again, this team has tricks up their sleeve. The real power here behind the team, Green Goblin, of course. Uh, not only does he have that 11 attack starting that he that his teammates can copy, but uh, yet another sinister another sinister six adjacent friendly characters with the sinister syndicate keyword modify their attack plus one or plus two instead if they are targeting a character with the Spider-Man family keyword, which Human Torch actually has on the opposing team. So hey, there you go, plus two against Human Torch, plus one um against anyone else that's a that's that's a great trait that's great um <clears throat> so that about does it for this team i know they've got a few more things but let's uh get this uh at least their turn started then we'll take a look at the a closer look at the fantastic four the front three members can fly now, uh, we're going to carry Mysterio and Prowler. So what I have to think about is, you know, where do I want to place that smoke cloud? Because he can generate it for free. It'll be three markers. And for sure, two of those three markers will be occupied by Prowler and Mysterio. And so I have to think about positioning now. Where am I going to put the other ones? Here, let's roll for deployment. Since we're using the hero clicks. Solo Rules 2.0 that you can find in uh, either one of my playlists or I'll make sure to try to put that in the description below as well. They got a three, which is conservative tactics. That means that they can take actions as long as they do not have any action tokens on them, which they don't because this is the first turn. And order doesn't matter, so I can take this turn in any order I wish. So... Uh, let's get moving here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to use his smoke cloud as free. Now I position Prowler here. Oh, before I forget, I got to do an aerial view of the map here. That's the Sinister Syndicate starting area. There's uh, elevated terrain. They're on the second level. And that right there is the first level. And there's a Fantastic Four team. Now, I put Prowler here because uh, since he has that uh, special power... The one that says casing the job, he's got sidestep, stealth, free, if Prowler occupies hindering terrain, which he does, place him in hindering terrain within four squares and line of fire. Uh, so, you know, now that he's occupying hindering terrain, uh, being on the second level, looking down at the first, there's some hindering terrain that he could use, this one right here or this one back here, that he has line of fire to, and he would be able to move if I wanted him to. Uh, I don't want to do that yet. But it is something, you know, that, uh, that's kind of planning ahead. Because if I had placed them over here, 
or here, I would not have been able to do that. So it's, it's just things to think about and why I keep saying that placement is very important in this game. Uh, moving on to Hobgoblin. Let's see, he's going to carry Mysterio into action here. Uh, he can make it here. Let's place him there. And finally, Green Goblin here. Oh, and he's got leadership, so uh, we definitely want to keep him close to Jack Lantern and Hobgoblin. Here we go. I'm not too thrilled about this. I was hoping to try to get Green Goblin closer to Prowler or Mysterio. Since they're at the front and they have potential, you know, potential attacks next turn, depending on what happens. Uh, so that way they could get that plus one for being adjacent to Green Goblin, but that's fine. We're not going to worry about that right now. Right now we'll worry about um, hoping that they can't get to Mysterio and Prowler so easily. Uh, because it was a pretty brazen move on my part to put them pretty much in the middle of the map. Uh, let's take another look at where they're at. This is, I think, yeah, this is slightly behind the middle of the map. And they've got a narrow corridor here with some blocking terrain, which is walls. So let's take a look at the Fantastic Four. Wolverine here. Can carry one character thanks to the new Fantastic Four trait, uh, but he can only carry characters with the Fantastic Four keyword. And once per turn, if he's carried and placed adjacent to two or more opposing characters, after resolutions he may make a close attack. Um, what I'm really banking on for Wolverine here is to give his teammates flurry, which is really the thing because uh, the thing is probably going to be the only other one making close attacks that reminds me let's generate an alicia grim bystander let's do that some justice uh, i'm gonna use wonder woman as a stand-in see and now what i'm hoping is uh, of course if wolverine can hit with that close attack uh the thing who is hopefully also getting plus one to his attack and damage, thanks to Alicia Grimm, uh, could potentially have 12 attack, four damage with Flurry. Uh, kind of hoping for some stuff to work out here in order for that to happen, but that's why we're doing the gauntlet. Hopefully this team can pull it off. And Dr. Fantastic is at 110 points again. Uh, so he can potentially generate those Doom Bots if Mysterio or uh, uses his outwit on them, or if, uh, I forget, I think Green Goblin and Hobgoblin. Oh, you know what? Hobgoblin has Perplex. Yes, uh, let's Perplex up uh, Mysterio's defense. Sure. No, you know what? He'll Perplex up his own defense. That's what he'll do. Uh, so anyways... If they target, uh, you know, anyone with the Fantastic Four keyword. Oh, no, not even. It's just a friendly character. When they're targeted without, by an opponent's outwit, perplex, or probability control, after resolutions, you may generate a number 005 Doombot. And he's got outwit and perplex as a special power to start with. And free, choose outwit or perplex, and he can use the chosen power an additional time this turn last time he didn't even get to he wasn't able to use it to his full potential because he was fighting a silver surfer team who has the power cosmic so he did have to choose a perplex a lot and eventually that is what helped take silver surfer down the fact that he was able to use perplex twice um but now that we have the actual option to use our wit twice that should uh, I want to see just how good he can be. So this is the reason why we made this team. And Human Torch, he's just there to tie up and hopefully get some damage in. If he gets some damage in, I'm happy. If not, I'm still happy. Um, <clears throat> 
Let's get to moving here. This is going to be rough because uh, there is the way these walls are, uh, since it's facing towards the opponent, it doesn't give these close characters some pro uh, much protection, actually. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to split my forces, and uh, this may be kind of risky, but um, seeing as how the Sinister Syndicate, I don't want to say relies on their team ability a lot, but you know, that's part of the strategy of that team to use their team ability is, you know, I don't want to play into that. I don't want to keep them all adjacent to each other, getting stealth from Mysterio, blades from Hobgoblin, uh, plus one attack to Green Goblin. Uh, so if I force them to split up, it, I'm saying it's risky because uh, I could just turn my attention to half of the team and try to take them out. But Wolverine can come back eventually. He does have that I don't stay down easy trait that when he's KO'd, except by this trait, instead put him on his card with four healing tokens at the beginning of your turn. Remove a healing token when you remove the last one. Place him on the map on click number six within four squares of a friendly character with a Fantastic Four keyword. If you can't KO him and it has protected Pulse Wave. So it'll work. So he'll come back. And um, which, uh, of course, if they go after Wolverine first, because I'm going to split him up, Wolverine and Thing and Human Torch and Dr. Fantastic. Um, or maybe I should do the other way. Oh. Just to have one type of each character, one range. Uh, regardless, is keeping Human Torch on away from Wolverine because Human Torch has that stop click. So it's like he can tank a little more damage. So he'll take that one hit initially if he does. He'll survive it because there's going to be plenty of teammates alive to keep him uh, to keep him alive on his stop click. And well, if he kicks the bucket, like I said, you know, if uh, that's fine with me, is I'm I'll be totally happy if. Uh, he, he absorbs that one damage with that stop click or that one hit with that stop click. So he doesn't really have a high bar on this team. And so, you know, carrying Dr. Fantastic, which is pretty much, I don't know, he can be the, the workhorse on this team. Uh, but I think I am going to split them up Wolverine is going to go with Dr. Fantastic and Human Torch is going to carry the thing. Let's roll for deployment for the Fantastic Four. Five and a four, frontline firepower. That means... Wolverine will take the first shot here. Or not the first shot, but he's going to get the first action. Uh, since he, him and Human Torch are going to be carrying, which then that leaves Alicia Grimm moving last because she has a zero point value. Okay, I think we're going to have to bait some attacks here. Um, now, I've counted how much Alicia Masters can move, which would be one, two, plus the five squares, one, two, three, four, five. So we want to use her to block line of fire. <laughs> as grim as that sounds. Uh, so we don't want to. There we go. So I don't want to move too far ahead with Wolverine carrying the thing. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're one square short. There we go. Uh, because this is as far as Alicia Masters, as Alicia Grimm can move. And remember that Alicia Grimm's, if she gets knocked out, the thing gets plus one attack speed and damage for the rest of the game. Uh, I mean, yeah, he doesn't get to get healed up, which is, I guess, another positive for Alicia Grimm. You know, if they, if they knock her out uh, before he's able to take any damage, but it's fine. I mean, if they want to give him 12 attack, four damage so early in the game, I am totally okay with that, uh, especially considering I can give him Flurry with uh, Wolverine. And we're placing the thing in front of Wolverine and behind Alicia Grimm 
because he has sidestep. So he has an additional two steps he can still take. The thing doesn't have that luxury. Um, so you want to get him in closer. One, two, three. He's still out of range, but we'll figure that we'll figure that out right now with Dr. Fantastic and his perplex. Uh, so now that we moved him, we gotta move human torch since this is frontline firepower. One uh Okay, so I think I'm going to be a little gutsy with Human Torch here. Um, kind of place him on the open. Like I said, I think I need to taunt some attacks here. And uh, I'm willing to sacrifice Alicia Grimm and Human Torch for the greater good. <clears throat> but we're not going to leave him alone, though. We're not going to leave him without protection. So, because remember, uh, well, let me move Alicia first and give him the token. There we go. So, Dr. Fantastic can use Outwit and Perplex, and he can use a free action to choose Outwit or Perplex, and he can use that power again. So, if they were to want to Outwit Human Torches, Energy Shield, and Invincible, that's fine with me because they'll generate a Doombot that'll take his place. So, I'm going to Perplex his defense up by one. So it can be an 18. Same as the things. And I'm going to choose perplex again uh, with that free action that he has. Since I can't use outwit because Prowler and Mysterio both have stealth and he does not have improved targeting. And he's going to use the other perplex to perplex up the things defense. In case they somehow get around Alicia and are able to attack him. Uh, he'll still have a 19 defense for them to deal with. As will Human Torch. Well, Human Torches will be 18 plus his Energy Shield. Unless they outwit it. So that's their turn. Handing things over to the Sinister Six. Well, Fearsome 5? I don't know. It's only 5 of you. I guess until Mysterio generates that Illusion Bystander. It'll be the Sinister Six. Now, I know we have Prowler here as kind of our close combatant, but I think he's very outmatched by the Thing and Wolverine. Even with Hobgoblin giving him Blades, Claws, Fangs. Let's roll for leadership. Oh, you know what? Let's roll for deployment orders first. Before we forget, five, four and a one. Uh, well, funny, because that means we got to start with Prowler. Uh, leadership now with Green Goblin. He's got it. He's got it. He's got the stuff. And uh, right now, I think Hobgoblin might be the better one to take the token off of. And here's why. This is what I was hoping would happen. Um, so let's talk about this opportunity uh, to talk some strategy here. So I wanted the token initially off of Hobgoblin because in the actual team strategy, you know, if I wasn't bounded by the solo rules right now, um, what is supposed to happen is Hobgoblin is supposed to move, position himself to where he's not really adjacent to a character um, he's just, you know, slightly out of reach. Use, um, so that way he, there's enough room for Prowler to try to make an entrance, uh, using that special power he has, which is if Prowler occupies hindering terrain, place him in hindering terrain within four squares on line of fire, right? Uh, so is to move, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You would have to move Prowler first, um, Regardless, oh no, I guess the order doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, the point is, you're supposed to get Hobgoblin like that next to Prowler. Prowler gets the 11 attack because of the Sinister Syndicate team ability. Hobgoblin has Perplex, so he can increase it even further. Also gives him Blades. He has Exploit Weakness. Uh, so you can see, just they can deal a... Uh, working together in tandem, they can deal a great amount of damage. That's not to say I can't use it anyway. If he if he had the token, I could still do it, but he would push because he does not have Indomitable. Uh, which, 
It's fine because looking at his next click, he has 18 defense. So it's kind of like it's not a bad trade off. It's not a bad trade off. However, since we are bound to the solo play rules, let me remove this. Enduring terrain markers generated by Jack O' Lantern. Uh, that means that we have to use Prowler first. Uh, he, like he has to also take a non-free action. So we won't be able to use that unless anything can give him some sort of movement with a free action, but I don't see it anywhere. That's fine. Uh, that forces us to think uh, our strategy may be slightly different. One, two, three, four. And, you know, besides, the only one he would be able to reach is Alicia Grimm. And I don't know if I'm ready to give Thing 12 attack, 4 damage with potential flurry. I will just demolish this mostly range team. <clears throat> really, I think the only option we've got with Prowler, the only real option is to move him because I don't want to just leave him there. I don't have to move Jack-O-Lantern to activate that free smoke cloud. So he's probably going to stay there. Hobgoblin and Mysteria are going to do their own thing. Um, so I think maybe we got to try to keep that stealth wall up to keep Human Torch and Dr. Fantastic at bay and try to deal with the melee characters slowly. Uh, so I'm going to have to use Mysterio and Prowler as bait. And we got to do this effectively or efficiently though because we don't want the thing grabbing objects as well. And if you recall, Green Goblin has a special power with Precision Strike uh, and he can use it with two plus characters instead of just one. And when given a range, destroy action. Green Goblin may destroy up to three objects and or pieces of blocking terrain needs line of fire to each. So I may have to push him to do something like that because I don't want the thing grabbing those objects. Either that or we get in front of them to prevent them from grabbing. But as you can see, there's a there's quite a bit heavy objects up here. So that's kind of why I'm even debating that. Okay, since it's frontline finesse, Prowler has to move first. I'm going to put him here to prevent them from trying to get through this door. Uh, they have to use the other door that's back there. Uh, so it's kind of like they have to stop to engage in combat. Unless they fly, of course, but I'm more worried about the thing and Wolverine. To be honest, uh, let's use that free smoke cloud. He can sh make it up to six squares away. Now Mysterio has to move because he's 50 points. And um, one, two, three, four, five. His range is not long enough to reach Human Torch. And I don't know, I don't think I want to use Outwit with him either because. Oh, they got to be adjacent actually in order for them to kind of benefit off each other. Yeah, I'm going to have to push Green Goblin. There's no way we can do this without getting rid of some of the objects here. And I'm going to place this here. So I redid the smoke cloud, uh, realizing that still took the move action with both Prowler and Mysterio. So that's still only two actions taken. Um, Jackal Lantern here is not going to take a move action or he's not going to do anything. Hobgoblin is next. Um, or Green Goblin because they're both at 75 points. Now Hobgoblin, like I mentioned, I do want to keep adjacent to them. So despite having, you know, enough offensive capabilities here, I think he's able to take like a running shot. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and try to attack the thing right now. I think we have to try to whittle them apart uh, because even if I were to take, make an attack on the thing that leaves him exposed to Wolverine and the thing. And, you know, I want him to, I want his teammates to benefit off of using that Blades Claws Fangs for being adjacent to him. So we'll put him there. 
And uh, like I mentioned, I am going to have to push Green Goblin. Uh, so he can make a range attack. To destroy three objects. Uh, well, it's not three objects. It's three blocking terrain. Where is that card? There it is. Destroy up to three objects and or pieces of blocking terrain. And um, we're going to leave him there ganged up with the rest of the Sinister Syndicate. He too now has Perplex. Shape change. Blades, claws, fangs. As does Prowler. As does Mysterio. As does Hobgoblin. Green Goblin is going to use his Perplex to bring up Jack-O-Lantern's defense to 18. And Hobgoblin is going to use his Perplex to bring up Prowler's defense to 18. That way, everybody on the outside, which is everyone but Hobgoblin, will have a defense of 18. I know it's not the best, but uh, it's better than 17, I guess. Uh, so here we go. Fantastic Four. Five and a four, frontline firepower. I kind of feel like the Fantastic Four got away with some stuff there. Um, just being slightly out of range from the Sinister Syndicate. I think mostly because of this narrow corridor they're happy to be fighting in, which doesn't give them much room to maneuver to make those running shots. And, you know, like I mentioned, I don't think I want to take out Alicia Master yet. And uh, wasting an attack on Human Torch when I could make those attacks against Wolverine and the Thing would have left them way too exposed. Hobgoblin, you know, would have probably have to have been taking the damage instead of hopefully Mysterio and Prowler, which I think I can live without them. I think this team can survive without them too. But we'll see. We'll see. For now... Because they got frontline firepower, that means Dr. Fantastic has to get things going. Uh, barring any free actions, of course, like sidestep. Uh, characters are more than welcome to take sidestep, use outwit, perplex, whatever, right? Like a uh, human torch, I don't think I've made it clear yet, but every turn besides the Fantastic Four, because he's also a wild card, he's copying uh, the Doom team ability. Uh, which is the Minions of Doom. When this character KOs a standard opposing character, after resolutions, he'll one click on a friendly character using this team ability. So it's another way to kind of help him get up from that stop click. Besides, you know, using the Fantastic Four team ability. So that gives him even more survivability and longevity, hopefully. Um, but anyways, seeing as how we're going from high to low, uh, he does not have any sort of moving attack, which is a shame. That means that he may have to sit back this turn again, which is fine because I'm going to just use, you know, the out, the double perplex power. Uh, because next in the action, be the thing or Wolverine. Uh, which if, I'm going to use Wolverine first more than likely so they can try to get that flurry. And uh, he does need to hit. He does need to hit with a new kind of fantastic teamwork when Wolverine hits with a close attack. Until your next turn, other friendly characters with a fantastic four keyword can use flurry. So he's got an 11 attack. He's got to hit 18 defenses. Um, but we, like I said, we want to make sure he hits. Um, so we're going to use Perplex on Wolverine's attack with Dr. Fantastic. Bring it up to 12. Let's see, he's got Charge. Yes, he does. And Flurry. Yes, he does. And Bleeds. And Sidestep, which I will probably use afterwards. For now, let's focus on using Charge Flurry with his 12 attack. Here we go. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, you know what? Let's make that a 13 attack. Let's use both perplexes on Wolverine right now. One, two, three. I don't want to. I don't want to put myself on that smoke cloud because that smoke cloud from Jack O' Lantern. Um, characters they would target when a when an opposing character occupying one of Jack O' Lantern's smoke markers makes an attack. Characters they would target can use shape change. So we don't want to give them shape change. Wolverine going in for the attack. Uh, wait, should I have moved Doctor Fantastic first? Well, no, he's not. He's got nowhere to go. He's doing fine on his own. Here we go. Uh, the first attack is going to go against Prowler. Oh, you know what? Prowler has shape change. Here we go. Oh, he got it. Uh, okay, well, I'll target Mysterio. Mysterio has shape change as well. He didn't get it. I need a five. That's a six. Mysterio has super senses. However... Um, we can also use theme team probability controls. Neither of the teams, neither team has used any. Uh, so the thing is, do I want to do that? I think I'll just chance it with super senses, right? I'm just going to chance it. Oh, well, here we go. Super senses. Oh, he got a six. He got a six people. You know, I'm thinking... Uh, trying to use Outwit with Fantastic here, but I forgot that they have Stealth. That's what makes uh, keeping that team, I guess, still in motion somewhat. That <clears throat> Dr. Fantastic cannot see them. And they, in turn, don't want to use Outwit either because of the generating those Doom Bots. It's too early in the game for them to be generating. I think I can survive without Outwit for a bit. As you saw, you know, Mysterio has his defenses. Now, that was the first attack. That was the first attack. Uh, right, because I targeted Flurry uh, with Prowler and... Uh, right, that was the first attack. So he felt the second shape change roll. I need a five again with Wolverine. He got it. That's double fives. He got more than the required... Double than the required number. Uh, and here comes Mysterio Super Senses yet again. He got a one. That's a one, people. Wolverine's rolling for blades. Slice and dice. The old one-hit kill. Right here on Casual Clickson. Only needing five clicks, so that was slightly overkill there. Wolverine. Um, that now, remember, grants the thing flurry. Not just the thing. I mean, it grants all the Fantastic Four, but I mean, really. Uh, let's go thing. Here we go. One, two. Oh, man, that smoke cloud again. Three. So I'll target Goblin. Uh, remember, he is getting plus one to his attack, speed, and damage because of Alicia Masters being within four squares of an opposing character. Alicia Grimm. I keep calling her Masters. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's do this then. Without Mysterio, they lost their shape change. Here we go. First attack. Uh, let's see, it's a five. That's a miss. Let's do second attack. And that's a hit. He will hit for three damage because Green Goblin only has toughness. One, two, three. Sidestep with energy shield, range combat expert. So he may start backing up from there. <laughs> We're not going to use Human Torch because that was a really good turn. Don't want to add any necessary pushing damage if we don't have to. Alicia Grimm um, she has sidestep. What we're going to do is we're going to prevent them from using energy explosion by keeping her 
close to them. And I mean, hey, if they want to use it, cool. You know, KO her. The thing will get that plus one to his stats anyway. Um, so yeah, so they clear. That's their turn. Going to back to the Sinister Syndicate's turn. This is their deployment orders. Unrestricted operations. Yes. That means they can act how they like. Oh, you know what? I forgot that sidestep with Wolverine, which he's going to break away. Sidestep. He missed. That's fine. I just remembered because Green Goblin has sidestep, and I think he's going to have to use that so he won't get clobbered by the thing the following turn. Before he does that, though, uh, we're going to use Prowler with Exploit Weakness, Blades, Claws, Fangs. Uh, let me remove these hindering markers that Jack-O-Lantern makes. So again, Prowler has Exploit Weakness on his own. Hobgoblin is granting him Blades, Claws, Fangs. Green Goblin is granting him plus one attack. And he's getting to still use the Sinister Syndicate team ability. So he's got 12 attack with Exploit Weakness and Blades, which Wolverine may want to watch out for because he only has toughness. He only has toughness and uh, Exploit Weakness can easily get around that. Oh, you know what? We forgot to clear an action token from Wolverine. Uh, he has that Bloodthirsty Barrage Charge Flurry Sidestep. When Wolverine KOs an opposing character, get after resolutions, remove an action token from him. Um, so yeah, so let's uh, let's try to take Wolverine out with Prowler. Here we go. Prowler with the counter attack. He too has sidestep and stealth. Ah, uh, well, the sidestep anyway. Um, oh, that's a critical miss! Wow. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Here you see the Prowler Wolverine matchup, hopefully, a little better. Um, wow. <laughs> that's, that's, that feels like a wasted attack because, you know, 12 attack with Blades Flurry doesn't come along too often. I, ha I can't believe I have to use Hobgoblin on this. I was hoping to kind of use this Perplex defensively. Uh, that's why I didn't, you know, Perplex his attack. They're down to two theme team PCs. Prowler reroll. That's a hit. Uh, let's see. He needs a he needs a six. So the odds aren't too far fetched. Um, if I were to use a theme team probability control with Wolverine right now. Um, you know, even if Prowler were to hit me for six, it wouldn't knock him out, actually, because this Wolverine has seven clicks, so it would put him on his last click. And then I can use Regen, unless Jack-O-Lantern takes me out right now. Or, you know, the, the I guess the worst situation that could happen is me give him the token and Prowler still roll that Blades for six, so now he's tokened up, can't Regen, took six damage vulnerable for a turn because he loses sidestep too um i'm gonna use an, t an action token on it. i'm gonna i'm gonna actually use that because or wait can dr fantastic see him now no um neither can human torch okay because uh we're gonna use it because If he stays alive, cool. If not, I tried. And we still got the thing. And Wolverine can come back. So, uh, yeah, and see, that's a miss. <laughs> so that was pretty lucky. Again, I didn't want to use that perplex on his attack. Because I was hoping to use that defensively because Green Goblin has two tokens. He needs to back up, put some distance between himself and the thing. Jack-o'-lantern. 
He's coming in with a ranged attack. Running shot. Parks himself next to Green Goblin. Making an attack on the thing. He's also getting that Sinister Syndicate and the plus one attack. Here we go. And that's a miss. Things are not looking good for the Sinister Syndicate. Green Goblin's going to try to break away. That's a three. That's a fail. And I, yeah, he's going to have to use that Perplex on him. Uh, I kind of want him to stay alive. He's going to clear, so hopefully he lives through this turn. But with the thing staring at him with uh, 12 attack, <clears throat> it's not looking great. Deployment roll for the other team. 5 and a 2, frontline firepower again. This is a fantastic 4. And keep in mind that they're doing pretty good with Dr. Fantastic really only contributing with his Perplex, which shows you just how powerful, I guess, Double Perplex can be. Oh, you know what? I forgot to generate that smoke. I'll do it right now. Here we go. Uh, you know what? Let's do this. There we go. We put the markers underneath um, underneath the characters under the figure so they can get that shape change if they get targeted. So they'll still have some sort of defense here. Jack o' Lantern coming, pulling through defensively, contributing somewhat. Um, so we got frontline firepower. That means Fantastic has to move first. And now I think it's time for him to take action. And Human Torch too. They're going to split up. <coughs> I think Dr. Fantastic will do just fine on his own. He's got 19 defense with uh, Invincible. If he gets into some trouble, he can always generate that Franklin Galactus bystander. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, one shy. One shy. Okay. Oh, his, his speed isn't far enough to, isn't long enough, isn't high enough to reach most good hiding spots. Okay, so Human Torch is going to have to carry him. Find some new positioning down here, that's fine. Um... So we got frontline firepower. That means I got to use the thing before I use human torch. And again, fantastic since he's going to get carried anyway. He wouldn't be able to make an attack. Um, he does have his perplex though. He does have his perplex. Uh, let's move Alicia Grimm here with a sidestep. Why not? Let's get her in there. Yeah, let's make that attack with the thing. He's got one shot. 12 attack, 4 damage. Here we go. Oh, you know what? Green Goblin gets shape change because of Jack O' Lantern's stealth or uh, smoke cloud, but that fails. And here's the attack roll. That's a hit. Uh, they're using one theme team PC to try to keep him alive. Put it on Green Goblin himself. Here's the reroll. That's a miss. Human Torch will use a theme team probability control. That's a hit. And that's going to knock him out. Sinister Syndicate not doing too good. 
like I mentioned, they were a fringe team. Um, it's a team I thought would work well together, and <laughs> they're just being outmatched by this Fantastic Four team that I made just a couple days ago. Uh, Human Torch is going to use Running Shot, carrying Dr. Fantastic. Yes, he's going to take a pushing damage, and that's okay. To carry him into stealth there. Targeting Jack-O-Lantern up here. On the second story, from the first level, Human Torch targeting Jack. Is that his real name? Daniel Burkhart or Jason Mackendale? Massendale? Anyways, 11 attack. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, the, his Perplex. Uh, he's going to use his Perplex twice on Human Torch here. Uh, perplexing his attack and damage. So he has 12 attack with 4 damage. Targeting Jack-O-Lantern. Should I throw it on to damage? Yeah, let's throw it on to damage instead. Um, that's a hit. He only needed a 6. Uh, how many clicks does Jack-O-Lantern have? Oh, he's got six. He'll take uh, four because of toughness. He'll land on Pulse Wave. Which I guess isn't that bad. Pulse Wave with Willpower. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, that does one pushing damage to Human Torch. Jack-O-Lantern takes uh, 5 damage, minus his toughness is 4. He's on click number 6, I'm sorry, click number 5 with 9, at nine attack, pulse wave, 16 defense, willpower. And, oh wow, yeah, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Fantastic can now use Outwit because they're not in stealth. They, they lost Mysterio. He's not targeting Prowler. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Regardless, that's terrible. Uh, he'll outwit the pulse wave. Uh, Wolverine's got sidestep. Um, he's gonna try to break away sidestep. He does. In case I need to target him with perplex. Uh, he's on the edge of the elevated terrain, so Fantastic has a line of fire to him now. Uh, he's gonna clear. I've used both of my perplexes. Uh, Alicia Masters here does zero damage. <laughs> She's honestly just there to die. I mean, she can use support too, I suppose, but uh, I don't know. I like the giving the plus one attack and speed and damage to the thing instead. So I use her as a tile piece. Um... Sinister Syndicate gets unrestricted operations. <laughs> Jack o' Lantern here. Make yourself useful. He's going to become our tie up piece. He's got willpower. He'll still generate these markers. Um, see, now what that does is it forces Wolverine. To try to use sidestep, otherwise it's going to grant him uh, shape change. And I don't want him on the edge. I'm going to try to move him away from the edge here to put, make him move over here. Away from his support. Um, we'll see how long he survives. Uh, let's do this. This will also... No, you know what? Put it there. Uh, so that's Jack-O-Lantern. Uh, these two have to clear because they have two action tokens. Um, and you know what? Before I move Jack-O-Lantern, I'll say that Hobgoblin uses Perplex on his defense.
Yeah, uh, put him at 17. I mean, these two only need, he only needs a 11 and 7, a 6, and this one needs a 5. So it's not like great numbers, but hey, you never know. You never know. Fantastic Force turn. Rolling for deployment. 6 and a 2, unrestricted operations. Um, no leadership here. What a shame. Wolverine. Uh, yeah, let's try to use that sidestep because um, regardless, I think maybe I still want to attack Prowler. I think he would be the better target. Uh, here we go. Sidestep with Wolverine. Uh, he breaks away. Now he's not... Uh, this is still unrestricted operations. Okay. Meaning, Fantastic does not have a move either. Two, three, four. Uh, yeah, let's make that attack with Wolverine first. He's got 11 attack, flurry, blades, hits. Prowler uh, will use the last team team prop for this team. Here comes the reroll. Oh wow, still a hit. It's I think you got the same roll here. And uh let's see. Well they don't have shape change. Or super senses. Uh anything that could help him out defensively here. So here comes that blaze roll. Three. He's got toughness. So he takes two. Uh, and hey, remember, Wolverine has Flurry. Uh, this Wolverine is ridiculous. Here we go. That's a hit. That's a hit. Here comes that Blaze Roll. Another three. Come on, Wolverine. Uh, he takes two yet again. Yeah, I'm going to move Dr. Fantastic. I think this game is secure enough where um, we can take him out of hindering terrain. One, two, three, four. Um, he's very exposed here, but uh, he needs to get in with his outwit. Now that they, you know, they're losing their stealth pieces here with Mysterio. Uh, he still has it, but he's been having to use his smoke cloud a little more defensively uh, to keep them, try to keep them in the game. Hasn't been succeeding, but this leaves Hobgoblin here open to outwit, which I will outwit his perplex. And I am also going to perplex his attack down twice with that special power he has. So it's down to nine. No perplex. Um, however, I'm thinking now that their team ability may not care. Let me see. When this character makes an attack, you may replace his attack value with a printed attack value of an adjacent friendly character that can use his team ability. So, I mean, it'll help on his attacks. He'll still have that, you know, minus two to his attack, but Prowler can still get that 11 attack, which, uh, don't really care because Wolverine, like I said, I'm willing to sacrifice Wolverine because he can come back. So yeah, we'll stick with that. We'll stick with that. Uh, Human Torch has sidestep. Let's put him in some hindering terrain to give him an extra plus one in case somehow managed to get a ranged attack on him. Alicia Masters, again, does nothing but stay there and continue to be a nuisance to the team, to the opponents. Here is a deployment roll for the Sinister Syndicate. Three and a two. Conservative tactics and uh, oh, they have to do a route check as well. Um, no, they're fine. It's 125 points out, so they're still above the threshold. Uh, so now that they have conservative tactics, only oh wow, that prevents Prowler from taking an attack. That's huge. That's huge. This is <laughs> I'm gonna call it here probably because uh, next turn the thing is free. Wolverine is free. Charge the thing will have flurry. It's pretty much game over. I think. 
And I think, you know, uh, this would be time better spent analyzing where I could have, yeah, you know, the footage where I could have maybe improved the team upon uh, or maybe just look at some different strategies that uh, that we can find out or discover by watching a video. I'm still going to take this final turn, though. Out of spite. Hobgoblin. Nine attack. <laughs> Two damage. Let's take out Alicia Grimm. Let's knock her out. Uh, that's a total of 14. Is that enough? Yes, but get this. She has super senses. I thought she was blind. I guess she she does have improved senses somewhat, right? She could probably dodge a better attack than I could, so. Oh, and she fails. Hobgoblin with that stealthy attack. And hey, guess what? The thing now gets plus one attack. Damage. Speed. Uh, he gets healed to a starting click, which he's already on. But this is for the rest of the game. He now has 12 attack, plus 1 speed, 4 damage. Oh, man. That was a joke of an attack, of course. Uh, and, of course, if I probably could act this turn, but he can't, he would easily make that 11 attack blades attack against Wolverine. This was a very rough game for the Syndicate. Um, let's Let's analyze this. Let's see what happened. So the Fantastic Four continue to roll along. Um, pretty impressive, pretty impressive showing for the Fantastic Four. We kind of got to see Wolverine in action, giving flurry to the thing. Uh, it was almost like a perfect matchup against the Sinister Syndicate. To be honest, they were a little, I think, outmatched. And that can happen. Uh, you know, a team like the Sinister Syndicate, I haven't done a gauntlet for. So I kind of just put together what I thought would work together. Um, and that's why I like going through this whole gauntlet process. Because it really lets me see the combinations of teams that you can make to try to get the best combinations and put them together. Um, if you recall, you know, these are all characters that I've gone through the gauntlet that have impressed me, right? Dr. Fantastic uh, was the one match that I didn't record. But he did great. Held off the Silver Surfer. Uh, Wolverine. Uh, we've seen him a couple of times, I think. His flurry special power, or his trait, uh, is just, it's amazing. It's too good to pass up. The Thing, we didn't do him justice. We did this time because I saw the potential that we had in The Thing here with his plus one attack speed and damage. And uh, we saw it in action as well. And the stop click. You know, this wasted attack on this stop click or let human torch live with an 11 attack three damage either way it's kind of win-win um where i'm still not too sold on uh specifically using the human torch maybe i'll consider using uh one of the other fantastic four like invisible woman i think she has a new kind of fantastic four trait that she can call in characters from the sideline uh but what you know for now this is the team and it's doing great uh, the Sinister Syndicate obviously is going to get, it's a team that's going to probably get dismantled and taking a look at, uh, see if maybe we can find different combinations uh, to show up, uh, to kind of shore up some of the weaknesses to their melee combat prowess. Um, I'm thinking maybe Green Goblin because they have plenty of range support with the other ones. Unfortunately, as much as I like Green Goblin, I think they need another melee character close combat to help out. Uh, in case they were to find themselves in close quarter like they did in this matchup. Well, that was the second match for the gauntlet. On round two for the gauntlet, we got two more teams to go. So make sure that you like and subscribe. That way you're notified when the next video goes live. As always, thank you so much for watching.